call and response. Now, I ask you to turn to the Acts chapter 16 and verse 9. 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 Call and response. Call and response. Call and response. It reads, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Call and response. Call and and response. God, we thank you for all you've done. We pray that you will continue to be with us and guide us. We pray that you would just uh, fix our ears so that we may hear, guide our eyes that we may see. We thank you, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And every heart says amen. Call and response. Call and response. God calls us. God calls us to a task, a responsibility, a duty. And what is our response to the call. Adam was called to cultivate the Garden of Eden. Noah was called to build an ark. Abraham was called to go to another country that God was going to show him Joseph was called to be a leader in Egypt. Moses was called to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. God called Deborah, or some say Deborah, to be a judge over Israel. John was called to preach, repent, and repentance. Jesus was called to die for our sins. Paul here says he was called to preach the gospel there in Macedonia. Macedonia, a place where it represented culture, intelligence, religion, and all achievements of a certain Greek civilization. However, they were spiritually bankrupt. And Paul's task was to go there and preach to them. God called, that's, that is what he said. We felt as if God had called us to surely go there and preach the gospel unto them. The call. Today, we have various people being called to action, to do, to witness, to testify to discipleship, the call. 
What is God, what is God calling you to do? What is God calling you to do? What has God told you to do? What the same way he called them, God has called you to do a task also. God has called me to do a task also. Me to a responsibility. Me to a duty. You to a duty. You to a responsibility. What has God called you to do? And sometimes we don't know what that is. And that's when we pray for guidance and understanding. That's when we pray God for God to make it plain to us. God, and sometimes we have too many things going on in our life and we can't hear the call. Sometimes life is so loud. Everything going on around us is so busy and we can't hear the call because we want to hear it in the volume. Sometimes it's the whisper, the call. What has God called you to do? Your standing is just as powerful as sometimes when God tells us to sit. Your speaking can be just as powerful as your quietness. God has called us to a task. And sometimes we try to rationalize and understand the task instead of just doing the task. What has God called you to do? There is something that happens between being called and our response. The children of Israel were called out of Egypt, but some of them wanted to go back to slavery. The children of Israel called out of Egypt, out of slavery, but some wanted to go back. Some people God can call out, bring out, deliver and they want to go back to the foolishness. When God delivers us, let us stay delivered. When God brings us out, let us stay out. When God calls us out, let us stay out. There's something that happens when God calls us. And we sometimes have to endure the wrath before we realize that we need to act when God calls. Tell you when those at night when you were growing up, the night when you were growing up and the street lights would come on, they would call you home. You 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 heard your mother call out of everybody that was standing there. You heard your mother call your name. I don't care what you were doing, however close the baseball game was, how, however close the score was, when you heard. Your parent call you, your mother, your grandmother. You would pause where you were, stop where you were to hear the call. And if she was calling you home, you stop right mid-action and start running as fast as you could home. Just like when the street lights came on. You, when they called you, you ran home. Why, if an inanimate object can call you, you will respond. When a crowd calls you to come over to this pity party, sometimes we respond. Why, when people call you with mess, do you respond by listening instead of the response being, I can't entertain that. God has been too good. I can't, I can't entertain foolishness because God has brought me out. I can't entertain somebody else's downfall because I, who am supposed to be spiritual, if a brother or sister is overtaken in a fault, I am to restore them, not put them down, but pray for them, lift them up, call and respond. When folks call you a mess, how do you respond? When people call you with junk, how do you respond? When people call you with a testimony, how do you respond? There is something that happens between being called and the response. 
the children of Israel were called out of Egypt and Psalm 1 to go back. Watch this. Jonah. Jonah was called to deliver a message to Nineveh, but he refused. What in us causes us to pause, to delay, to rebel against our call? What in us causes us to not respond and heed the call? What, why do we respond like Jonah sometimes? And I have to say, I, I too was like Jonah. No, God, you didn't, not me. Not me. Do we feel inadequate? Has, has the world been so influential on our lives and on our conscience that sometimes we think that we're inadequate? We don't know enough. We're not educated enough. We're not old enough. We're not experienced enough. We, we are not good enough. We don't have enough. Why, what is it that our response is not how God Almighty would have us to do? Is it temptation like Adam? Is it feeling inadequate like Moses? Is it jealousy like King Saul? Is it just rebellion like Jonah? Or is it laziness? Is it procrastination? The older preachers and pastors would say to me as a young person, they poured a lot into me and they would say, if God calls you, God will qualify you. We often seek man's approval in our calling. We have to seek to please God and not man. Man will one day yell, hallelujah, shout your praises, and then a week later they'll be saying crucify him. Man and men can be fickle. If you don't do what they say, how they say, they can cause you to go into places and spaces of depression and frustration. We have to please God, not man. Man will always understand. There's a call. What keeps us from the call? Is it fear? Is it temptation? What, what, what's stopping you? Is it feeling inadequate? Is it jealousy? Is it rebellion? Is it laziness? Is it procrastination? If God called you, God will qualify you. What is it that keeps you from the response? Call and response. 1 Samuel chapter 3. God called Samuel and Samuel responded, here I am. Isaiah 6. Fellow said, who will go? The Lord said, who will go and who can I send? And the response was, here I am. Christ calls us to discipleship. Revelation, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus said, come unto me. All ye, lay, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I ask you today, what is your response? Call? Listen, Paul said, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man in Macedonia and prayed him, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly gathering that the Lord has called us to preach. And so we went. There's somebody that needs your help. And they're calling out. Sometimes it's calling out in silence. And they need you to be that light that shines. They need you to, to call you to be that, that Bible that they never opened. But you represent so much of that. Called out. What is your response? 
Don't feel and don't worry about it. You, you do it all the time. In the history of our worship experience, we start off with call and response. Call and response. We have uh, powerful men in our lives that say, a charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. And then the congregation, their response is the same as what he has just lined. But then within that song, it says, to serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. And then the congregation responds in the same manner, to serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. Throughout the worship experience at many of our historical churches, you see and hear call and response. And maybe you don't even think about it because it's just natural for some of us to do. And then at the uh, conclusion, maybe even, even during the announcement, someone will get up with a calling or a welcome. And then there is a response. You will hear at the conclusion of many sermons, won't the Lord do? And then the response is, yes, he will. You will hear the call, ain't the Lord all right? And you will hear the response, yes, he's all right. You will hear the call, you will, you will hear this call, won't God be a doctor for you? And you will hear the response, yes, he will. You will hear the call, won't God make a way out of no way? You will hear the response, yes, he, he will. You will hear the call, won't God be a bridge over some troubled waters? You will hear the response, yes, he will. Won't God deliver you when you've been down in the valley? You will hear the response, yes, God will pick you up. Yes, God has turned me around. Yes, God has placed my feet on solid ground. You will hear the call, won't God make a way and be a shepherd for you? Won't God be a company keeper for you? And you will hear somebody say, yes. He will. You will hear the call and respond. You hear it Sunday after Sunday. Don't belittle the call and response. The call and response ought to excite you that God thinks enough of you to call you to do what he, what he has called you to do. Do what God has called you to do. Don't worry about your past because everybody has a past. But you have a right now going forward also. And I like to look at what God has for us because what's ahead of us is greater than what's behind us. Call and response. Won't God make a way? Those of this new generation say, won't he do it? Yes, he will. And then they have a little phrase say, won't he will? Won't he will? Yes, God will. God will do it. God is able to do exceeding and abundantly. Sometimes all we have to do is testify. Talk about the time that he was in the valley, in the storm. And God told the storm, peace be still. Call and response. Call and response. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. What is your response? Give your life to him today. Give your life to him. Walk with him. Talk with him. God is calling you to discipleship, to follow him. Walk with him. The call, what is your response? What is your response? He's saying, come unto me. What is your response? Who's stopping you? What's keeping you from giving your life to Christ? What's stopping you? Because if you keep reading that same Acts chapter 16, you'll see a man say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? What's stopping you? Make that decision. You know what God is calling you to do. 
respond. Call and respond. Won't he do? Yes, he do. Has God been good to you? Has God made a way for you? Has God smiled on you? Has God brought you out? Has God been your anchor? Has God been your rock? Has God kept you and protected you? The response, yes, he will. Be that light. Jesus said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The call and response. Call and response. We do it all the time. So let us do it in the affirmative, pleasing God and not worrying about men. God bless you and decide to follow Christ. That old song that we used to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back. God bless you. We will convene again with prayer tonight at 7 o'clock. God keep you. May God strengthen you. May God be a hedge of protection all, all around you. Now, may the grace of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth, now, and forever. And God bless you and keep you. And all of us say amen. Remember, it's pleasant at the grove. There's peace at the grove. And God truly, truly loves you. We will see you tonight at 7 o'clock with prayer. God bless you. I have decided to follow Jesus.